farce crowned. A lord is not without wisdom, a mocking parody, a waiting schism. Life itself shrivels in his wake, and all the world feels pain and ache. Hello, hello. Hello. I'm Rose. And yes, this is a baby strapped to my chest. He was not wanting to nap. So, yeah, if you guys want a Deb Diary video, it's happening with him right here, sleeping with his little elephant. Because nine month olds be nine months olds. <laughs> But hey, we're here with poetry to my ears. We've got a new dev diary. And one of the best traits from CK2 is making a reappearance here in CK3. And that is the poet trait. Now, it could randomly happen in CK2. And the, like the best thing you could do with it was use it to torture your prisoners and drive them insane. Which, thankfully, they are returning and bringing back in this version of Crusader Kings. So that's gonna be fun. Don't end up in my dungeons. You either get eaten, you, or you get poetry to claim to you. All the terrible, terrible, terrible types of poetry that the game can come up with, such as, Oh, how such a beautiful countenance gleams. Being caught in her smile is as warm as sunbeams. For her life is my life and our life to be. And as long as I'm with her, I'll ever be free. I mean, it's not terrible. But it could be a lot better, but it makes it funnier, so I'll take it. So yes, we're getting the poetry trait back, then that'll be part of the free patch, so that will be nice with 1.3. You can write poems on romance, legacy, mourning, strife, incompetence, and an incompetence, in, incompetence, incompetence poems are essentially slam poems. So thank you for creating those. I appreciate that. That's gonna be fun. I'm sure. With the poems, not only can you torture people in your dungeon, but you can also send poems to your friends or to fellow nobles and try to get them to like you more for the poem, whether they fall in love, if it's a romance, or they just, you know, they like it. Now, granted, if they don't like your poem, you're not going to be very happy. <laughs> um, so good luck with that. That's going to be entertaining. Uh, they have also a spoiler tag, so spoiler tag right here they gave us some of the patch notes that are going to be coming with 1.3 of things they're going to fix uh men at arms and special troops and mercenaries now have travel time so they're not going to teleport from one end of the map to the other travel time is based on how far away they are from your capital wherever the spawn point is so if your spawn point is in rome and your capital is in southern india they're gonna take a while to get there they're not going to magically teleport anymore which is nice uh, the renowned cost of acquiring dynasty legacies is going to change, and the dynasty legacy perks are also being rebalanced. They don't tell us what's going to happen, but that is happening. Um, the yearly event pools have been restructured, so a lot of the triggers are either loosened or removed outright. Um, this means we should get more events when we're playing, which is nice. Roughly one random event from the pool every four years rather than five to six, which I appreciate that. That gives us more role play. It's nice. Uh, grandchildren and great-grandchildren should no longer wander off following the same rules as children. Thank God, because, you know, your character lives to be 90 and they have great-grandchildren that are now on the other side of the map. And you're like, I didn't even get to see you married. And now you're like 40 and you're unmarried. What? That, that'll be fixed, thankfully. Because uh, they know they're in the, you know chain of succession uh and i skipped infirm traits so the infirm trait is being moved from yearly pulse to the health pulse so it can happen to anyone now not just rulers which is very fitting married characters will no longer wander away from their spouse if they're the uh i, I hesitate to use the term submissive i guess the the less powerful person in that marriage you can also now disinherit people outside diplomatic. You can also now in disinherit people outside of your diplomatic range, which is gonna be nice, because it's really annoying. It's like, yeah, I can't even get in contact with this person, so I'm just gonna cut them out of the inheritance. Legit. So AI rulers who form an alliance in the middle of the war will now wait one month before calling their new ally. So at least you have time to be like, oh my god, I'm now at war with the guy my troops are standing on top of. Run. Uh, they changed feudalizing as a tribe. You will no longer get stressed from parents or siblings dying of old age when they're over 65. Because, you know, it's kind of expected. 
Though, if they're friends or lovers, you might still get some stress because, you know, you knew it was going to happen, but it still hurts so much. There's also going to be more. There's several interface changes. Players now receive a warning when their enemy in a war forms a new alliance. Thank you. <laughs> and hovering over the unit plate of a friendly unit now shows its full path. So that's nice for allies. Where are you, where are you guys going? Oh, you're running in figure eights around this mountain for some reason. Okay, that's kind of stupid, but at least I know where you're going. So it'll tell us when a hook is going to expire within three months. When we're building a new holding now, it'll tell us what type of holding rather than just the name of it, which is very helpful when you're building unfamiliar things and religions or cultures you're not really familiar with. Uh, scheme success and secrecy modifiers will now show us percentages all the time. Uh, and then they changed some game content. So all that religious clothing and headgear is now accessible from the barbershop. You can forgive someone their crimes in exchange for opinion, which is useful. Guardian might now get a hook on their ward, which should they, if they are, a guardian might now get a hook on their ward if they're greedy or deceitful. Uh, you can now offer concubines and consorts to other characters. Thank you. That was something that was in base, well, not base game CK2, but it was something in CK2 when they added consorts and concubines. The consorts didn't come to Holy Fury, but same diff. When offering vassalization to a feudal ruler, you can now offer a more lenient contract. Added a narrative event for converting to a new faith, as well as a notification for when your liege converts to a new faith. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there'll be more. And unlike some other dev diaries we've had so far, they're in the past few weeks. This one has very positive responses. Only seven X's. Yay! So, no matter how many days twist and pass, winds whisper coldly through the grass, when one so great falls so far, are fate's cruel whims not simply bizarre? If you think so, please subscribe to this channel, ring that bell, leave a like, leave a comment, help me defeat the evil algorithm here on YouTube, and I'll see y'all next week for the next Dev Diary. Bye guys!